Hey, welcome to my vlog. If you have been keeping up with all my previous videos, you'll know that I've been having some health issues. I've been going on for about three months now. But things are finally starting to get moving. So last week I had some blood tests done. I was a complete mess. I managed to film a little bit, but unfortunately because of the bad weather and I didn't know whether I'd be able to film in the hospital or not, I didn't manage to get what an absolute mess I was actually during the procedure. But watch this a little bit and then after it I'll let you know actually what the results are because the results are actually back already. Okay, so it is about 10 to 11 at night. I'm freaking out. I have my blood test tomorrow at half past 11. I've got to get two buses to get there. So my first bus is at 10. 10 to 10? Yeah, 10 to 10, so that I can get there, and I should get there with about 20 minutes to spare. I've got to walk into a hospital, which is going to take about 5 minutes, actually. I feel tired, but I don't feel like I can sleep, but I'm just generally freaking out. I know it is a blood test, and it kind of frustrates me as well, because it's like, why can't I just do it? Why can't I just sit there and do it? It takes a few minutes, if that. But I can't just sit there and do it and I don't know why. And it really gets to me. And then I get like this. And all I want to do is just sit and cry. I know I have to do it because if I don't get these blood tests done then I can't get my diagnosis and I can't get my treatments and I really, really need them. I've just got to get myself through it somehow. I don't know how. I don't know if I'm going to sleep tonight. And if I do, I don't think it's going to be a very good sleep. Hopefully I'll feel better in the morning. Try and film something in the morning. Let you guys know how I'm feeling. I, as you can probably see, am now dressed. Ready. Well, I won't exactly say ready, but I'm dressed to go out the house and go have this blood test done. Didn't get to sleep until about 2 o'clock this morning and was up at 7. So I haven't really slept that well. Woke up at some point during the night as well. So I haven't slept great, so I'm tired. I haven't eaten yet, but I'm taking some food with me. My wonderful boyfriend has made me a sandwich as well because my appointment is half 11 so it's going to be near lunchtime by the time I'm done and I do have issues with my blood pressure dropping occasionally. I've also got chocolate with me as well and some grapes and drink just to make sure I'm fine. I feel like I'm freaking out but I'm not freaking out because I've taken my anxiety tablet. So that's quelled some of the kind of like racing heart and what have you that I usually get so I'm going to take another one of those at 11 because then that's four hours after I took my last one and then that should make me feel a little bit better. I think I'm more freaked out about like the unknown. I've requested the um, numbing gel but I think I'm just fearful that they don't give it to me. Um, I don't see why they wouldn't but it's because I've never requested it before and without it I don't know how I'm going to feel so I'll see how I feel when I get there and I'll update you when I get back home. Bye for now. I'm back home. I did it. I managed to actually do it. I managed to get my blood taken. And I'm really trusting myself, really pleased. I don't know if you can tell from my eyes, I've been absolutely bawling my eyes out. I got there and because of buses and things, I was early. First bus was early, which meant I ended up on a slightly early bus. It was also early, so I had about half an hour to wait at the hospital and because I was there for half an hour I was getting so wound up. When they called my name and I sat down there was this lovely um, Scottish nurse, uh, a guy and he was like, first question was like are you okay with needles and I shook my head and burst into tears. I mean I'd spent about 15-20 minutes sat waiting while trying not to cry anyway so that 20 minutes of wanting to cry just all came flooding out and he was like okay okay like take a deep breath relax he's like I'm just going to go get another nurse he went and got two female nurses and I can't remember what they said their names were because I was so like freaking out and everything but they were absolutely lovely and now unfortunately and because I've already done videos mentioning all this um, the phlebotomy departments who do blood tests they actually don't have the numbing gel, so I was unable to have that. If you want numbing gel for having blood taken, you have to
to buy it yourself from a pharmacy and use it before going um, or however long you need to put it on before having your blood taken so I couldn't have that these two nurses were absolutely lovely I'm trying not to cry they were so patient with me I pretty much cried all the way through the whole thing and the one that actually did it she kind of like talked me through it so she was like okay we're not going to do anything I just want you to show me your arm and that kind of thing because I asked if I could have it taken elsewhere and they usually do it on your hands but she looked at my hands and she said unfortunately I have flat veins in my hands they don't kind of like protrude enough I couldn't have it done for my hands I had to have it done for my arm so that initially freaked me out the fact that I couldn't have numbing gel freaked me out on top of the already mega freak out that I was having so she just kind of did it like step by step so she was just like I'm just going to show you out and she's like oh you've got really good veins there actually this is going to be like so easy and it's not going to hurt and blah blah and she was so good with me and then she was like okay so w would you let me put the tourniquet on your arm and that so she got it and she was like you know do you want me to do it she's like I can do this so quick it's going to be so painless and I was just like just do it just do it quickly get it over and done with and there was another like younger nurse and she was stood the other side of me so I had it taken out my left hand and she was stood on the right hand side and she was talking to me and asking me questions she's like oh who is it outside that you brought with with you and obviously it was my boyfriend and that and she was like how long have you been together and she was just trying to distract me from it and I did feel it go in and it did feel like a scratch but to be honest with you that is the least it has ever hurt and I have had lots of injections as a child um, always been really stressful always caused me to have a massive meltdown this time as much as it did cause me to have a meltdown because obviously I've got that those memories in my head which you know is me just convinced it's going to be such a traumatic experience actually it wasn't in the end and they were so good with me so patient even though it went well it barely hurt I mean my if my cat catches me with a claw it hurts more than what that did even though it was a much better experience and I got through it and cried the whole way through it I you can obviously you know I don't know if you can hear it in my voice but I'm still kind of like mid meltdown because I've had to kind of like swallow my feelings and swallow wanting to have a really good cry um, because I needed to get two buses to get back home and I'm still tired because I you know, still didn't sleep very well last night hungry, I've got sandwiches ready to eat so I'm still mid meltdown because of it and I just wanted to kind of show how these kind of situations can affect somebody who's autistic I'm 35 years old I should not be crying my eyes out over a small tiny blood test that didn't even really hurt but I am because I'm autistic and that's how my brain works and it makes me freak out and it makes me have a, a meltdown and it's overwhelming you know the hospital was busy it was noisy it was bright I had to change into my sunglasses I had to put my headphones on so all that as well on top of everything on top of not sleeping properly it was just too much so I am going to put something on to watch and I'm going to eat my sandwiches and then I'm probably going to have a really good cry and then I'm going to play some games and I'm going to do nothing for the rest of the day I don't have any energy to do anything so as you can probably tell from that I was a complete absolute mess during the actual procedure luckily my results have come in quite quickly they actually came in on Monday so everything is fine with my blood test which is rather weird because I would have thought that if I do have um, some kind of irritable bowel disease that there would have been some kind of indicator of inflammation which I know they were testing for but there wasn't anyway the only thing that actually did come back as wrong is my vitamin D levels I don't get outside much at all so we don't get a lot of sun so we don't get a lot of opportunity to get vitamin d the doctor said whereas normal levels are between 50 and 150 mine came back as 20 so they are ridiculously low vitamin d can cause fatigue and can also cause aches and pains as well which i do get pain in my knees and my joints so it could be because i'm low on vitamin d the doctor has given me a prescription because they usually don't prescribe vitamins but my levels are so low that the tablets he's given me are ridiculously strong you can only get them on prescription 
reading the instructions always makes me laugh on these sorts of things because these tablets you're only meant to take them once every other week that's how strong they are but i'm having to take one a day because that's how low my levels are so i take these tablets for 20 days and then he's told me which ones to get from the local pharmacy to take after that and i have to take them the whole of winter and then review it after that so i'm hoping that taking these tablets will mean that my energy levels start to rise and I'm start able to actually get more done in a day. Because I've now got things wrong with me just stacking up, I always thought the fatigue was to do with things that I already know about. Autism can cause fatigue. Having ADHD, especially because I'm not medicated at the minute for it, can cause fatigue. Having any kind of chronic illness, but particularly what I possibly have, causes fatigue. And then having low vitamin D levels causes fatigue. So I've now got four things currently wrong with me that cause fatigue. It kind of makes me wonder how the hell I'm even able to get out of bed in the morning or lift my head up. So it's no wonder I am tired all the time and I find it difficult to get things done. It is what it is and at least we've found this one out and at least we're finding all these things out so that it hopefully I have a better future and better energy levels and I can start getting treatment for things and my general quality of life can start to improve. That's it, that's what happened, I hope I never have to go through it again and I'll see you guys in the next video, bye for now.